G'day people, what we're looking at here today is a Super Takama F1.4 50mm vintage camera lens. Now th this particular lens is fairly old but fairly popular with um, people with modern um, cameras that uh, you know accept uh, various lenses via adapters and that's why I had this lens, I was using it with a Sony Nex. Um, it's a fairly good, fairly good, fairly sharp lens overall, and it's got a distinct look to uh, the images that it produces. So, when you look at an image from this lens, it's kind of it has a uh, rather nice sort of vintage uh, look to it. Of course, these lenses are not as good as the new ones, but um, the new ones sometimes can be a little bit too good in uh, in the way they uh, render images, because these older ones are a little bit. Um, more retro look and some people go for that look. So anyway, the net result of these lenses are quite popular. Now, another popular use of these lenses is in um, astrophotography, simply because it's a, it's a fairly sharp lens. So I know there's quite a few people that use them in astrophotography. Now, I would actually recommend not using this particular lens for astrophotography. Uh, and the reason being is the rear element of this lens is actually quite radioactive. Um, it uses thorium in the uh, in the rear lens, and uh, that's quite radioactive. The reason why I wouldn't recommend using it for astrophotography is the fact that CCD sensors and uh, CMOS sensors can actually um, uh, pick up uh, radiation. If you put a radioactive source in front of a CCD sensor or a CMOS sensor in a dark room, you will see little white flashes of light. Uh, and that's caused by the actual radiation. Now, this lens is actually very radioactive. So, if you were to put this in front of your uh, in, on your camera in front of your sensor and, and have it there for a, say a long exposure at night, like what you do in astrophotography, chances are some of the little white spots that you end up in your image are not going to be stars, but rather the result of radiation coming off this lens. I'll give you a quick demo. This is a homemade um, Geiger counter that I made a few years ago. Here's a, an old fashioned vintage clock with uh, luminous dials. Now the luminous dials are radioactive and that's why they're luminous at night. Now I'll just sit that on top with the dials facing downwards. Now my Geiger Muller tube in here is sitting along here somewhere. It's a fairly long tube. It's sitting in there just underneath this top cover. <clears throat> you can see now we're up around 840, 800 counts per minute. This white LED here is just indicating that we've gone over the alarm threshold, which I had set to 300. We're at 800 now, so it's gone over the threshold. Now I'll remove that clock. Now these are lamp, you know, gas powered uh, lamp mantles. This is the, uh, the little uh, fabric thing that uh, it sits inside the lantern and the gas or the kerosene flame um, go, basically happens inside this and this thing, um, the mantle itself just glows white and gives you the light. Now these are radioactive as well. The old ones are radioactive because they put, um, they put some radioactive element in there to make them glow whiter. So the old old ones of these are radioactive as well. Now I'll just sit that on top of that. You'll see the uh, counts per minute increase quite dramatically. This, by the way, is what they look like when you buy them in a bag. So you just install them in your lantern and uh, you light it and it gives you a nice white light. If you buy a, a modern day one of these mantles, it, it, it'll basically say on the packet that um, non-radioactive, but the old ones were radioactive. So again, we're up around the uh, 800. If I squash it down a little bit by hand, it'll probably increase a bit. There we go, 960. 950, okay, we'll take that off. Now, the lens, the old uh, Takama. I'll, I'll place it with the um, 
radioactive element down. Sliding off my Geiger count at the moment. Let me uh, 2,592. You can see that's fairly radioactive. And uh, let's say I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't place that on a camera for astrophotography because. Um, the radiation coming off that lens is quite intense and it would definitely um, cause little white um, spots of light to appear in your image. I might one day when I have some time get a, a CCD sensor and, um, and actually show you how it, it can actually pick up radiation. In fact there's, um, there's a phone app uh, that actually turns your phone into a Geiger counter it's pretty crappy and it really doesn't work very well at all and it's very very insensitive but it works on that same principle of the actual radiation um, being picked up by your uh, your camera sensor in your phone and it produces a result so it does work but it's not you know not accurate and it's very very insensitive but it's using that principle of the fact that uh, CCD and CMOS sensors can actually detect uh, radiation So there you have it, the Super Takama 50mm f1.4 radioactive lens. Yes, take care. Catch you next time and don't forget to subscribe.